God dwells in you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you give us the gift of joy, and you tell us that it is your will for us to revel in joy and to spread joy around this world. Descend upon us this morning as a spirit of joy, as a spirit of laughter. May this time together lighten our hearts and our spirits and send us from this place ready to spread that joy in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's good to have everybody here. If you're new at All Saints or visiting with us here this morning and want to know about future events in this community, there are green contact sheets by the door, actually by both doors. Take a moment to give us your contact information at the welcome table on the lawn. You can pick up a red welcome bag that includes a welcome card for you to fill out on return, or you can just fill it out right there. We're really glad that you're here. Uh, at, all, at all times, we put our faith into action here at All Saints Church. Uh, every week, we pick one or two things to focus that action as a community. Uh, and so on December 6th, the president unilaterally decided to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and announced his intention to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, a decision which constitutes a grave threat to future peace and, frankly, to present peace. We write Congress... We are writing today to Congress to urge an end to the occupation of East Jerusalem and to express our solidarity with our siblings in the Holy Land. And so please visit the action table by the door on your way out this morning to sign this important letter. Thank you. And as always, uh, this community is buoyed and sustained by three things. Uh, the first is just a huge amount of God's Holy Spirit present in this community. The second is the life and labor of the members of this community. And the third is the financial generosity of the people in this community near and far. And so if you have already filled out your pledge for 2018, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't already, uh, we really need to collect those pledges. Say your prayers and put down whatever God puts on your heart. If we all do that, everything is going to be wonderful. If you are streaming with us online, everyone turn and wave to the people who are streaming. Uh, there's a donate button right there. Just click on it and make a gift to All Saints Church. Uh, no amount is too small, but no amount is also too big. So just give whatever you feel God is calling you to give to support this ministry. Uh, we were talking about what it was that we needed to do this Sunday for the forum. And one of the things that we recognized is that it's been a hard year. And it feels like every time we wake up, there is something new that just kind of makes our shoulders sag. Um, and this is Gaudate Sunday. This is Joy Sunday. And we thought, you know, what we really need to do is just to come together and be joyful, just to come together and laugh. And so immediately, who came to mind was Alex Mappa. Uh, Alex is an incredible parishioner. He and his husband, Jamie, and their son, Zion, are just wonderful parts of this community. Uh, I have this bio from his website. Ellen DeGeneres has called him smart, hilarious, and funty, funny. Variety has said Alex Mappa is a freak. Alex, Alex, Alex. Alec Mappa, Alec Mappa is a freak. No one should be this talented or perhaps vindictive as well. I think it's best if I get off this stage as quickly as possible, and I'm going to introduce Alec Mappa. Thank you very much, Mike Kinman. Thank you, you got thank my name you. Right. Yeah, Mike Kinman. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. My, thanks. Thanks. Oh, that's great. That's great. Pasadena, make some noise. Oh, we can do better than that. Pretend for a second that you're Baptists. Make some noise. All right, that's how the Baptists do it. If you don't clap and laugh like you mean it, you're all going to hell. You will all burn in a lake of fire for eternity. Merry Christmas. Um, uh, okay, weirdest comedy intro ever. Jerusalem, let's bring on some stand-up. I mean, it's bad enough that you made me do this at 10.15 in the morning. I usually don't leave the coffin before 6.45, let's be honest, all right? In fact, we have to pull these shades down before I burst into flames. Um, hi, everybody. Oh my God, not my usual crowd. 
I feel like I'm looking at the finalists of an Elizabeth Warren look-alike contest. <laughs> you all look fabulous. My name is Alec Mappa. I will be your entertainer for the next six to seven hours. And um, I know what you're thinking. Asian driver, no survivor. <laughs> but I want you to trust me, Pasadena, because I love All Saints. I love being a part of this parish. And it's Joy Sunday! It is Joy Sunday! I am a member here of All Saints. Uh, my my, my 12-year-old son is an acolyte. My husband back there, Jamie Abair, is in charge of congregational development. We are always here. We, every time we get away, try to get away, we are sucked back into the vortex that is All Saints. Oh, please, feel free to walk <laughs> through the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Osmond family. I don't know if you... Uh, know about them. Oh my gosh. Um, we're a very visible part of All Saints family. We've been here for quite a while. I don't know if you've seen us before. Um, uh, I'm Asian. My husband is white. Our son is black. We look like the last two minutes from It's a Small World. Um, <laughs> eight years ago, we adopted a five-year-old African-American boy from Compton. <laughs> because uh, we like doing things the hard way. Uh, but we had to be very upfront about the type of family we were from the very beginning. When we adopted our child out of foster care, I said, okay, look at us, we're all different. All families look different. Some people have a mom and a dad, some people have two moms, some people have one mom, some people have one dad. You have two dads, and look at us, we're all different. You're African American, Papa is Cajun, which means he's from Louisiana. He's kind of French and he thinks he's black. <laughs> You're African-American, but the thing that makes us a family is that we all love each other, yes. So we dropped him off at preschool, the very first day of preschool. We go to pick him up. We're there in the gay dad station wagon, the Volvo. <laughs> a little girl runs up to my son and says, hey, you have two dads? My son says, yes. And the little girl says, why? And he says, because we're French. That was his takeaway. <laughs> oh my God. When we first adopted him, everybody was like, where is he from? Is he from Botswana? <laughs> is he from Rwanda? Is he from Malawi? And I was like, no, he's from Compton. Uh, just to, as a celebrity, I, I feel it's my duty to inform people that you don't have to go all the way to Africa to adopt a black child. You could do so right here in the United States. Thank you for that smattering of applause. I really, I, it's, uh, it's really filling the hole. I'm up here because I'm a bottomless pit of need aching to be loved. And that's showbiz, kid. So uh, our son has been living with us for eight years. He is 12 years old right now. Um, I don't know if any of you have raised a child going through puberty. Um, but if anybody right here in this audience would like to murder me and make it look like an accident, I would appreciate it. Um, he's been living with us for the eight years, and after eight years of living with two gay men, my son sounds like a 12-year-old boy who's been living with two gay men. Um, he was at the, we were at the supermarket yesterday, and he was misbehaving. And there's nothing I just despise more than children misbehaving at the supermarket. He was being very rude. He was running up and down the aisle, knocking things over, bumping into people. And I pulled him aside. I said, you listen to me. This is not a playground. This is Whole Foods. <laughs> you nearly knocked down that tower of kombucha. Settle down, be considerate, you are not the only person here. And do you know what he said to me? And the Oscar goes to... <laughs> Before I go any further, I'd like to thank everybody here at All Saints for inviting me here today. Um, Give them a huge round of applause. 
I would especially like to thank the buildings and ground people for keeping this place so pristine. You have, you have no idea how hard the buildings and grounds people work just so you can have a gluten-free wafer every Sunday. You have no idea. And of course, I would like to thank Mike Kinman, our rector. You rector, you brought her. Um, Oh my God, he's been doing a great job. He's been with us a year, a whole year. And let me tell you, he's a radical departure from the last Southern white heterosexual man who ran this place. <laughs> Just so different. You're so different. Well, I mean, I, honestly, well, look at him. He's completely different than Ed Bacon. Well, first of all, you're sober as a judge. I mean, just like, <laughs> look. He can hold his head upright at 10.15 in the morning. It's miraculous. I know you're not used to seeing that. I mean, hey, listen, no judgments. I love Ed Bacon, but he didn't get a nose that red from windsurfing, let's be honest, all right? Um, glass houses, glass houses. All right. Hey, no judgments. Episcopalians love to drink, okay? Church of England, hello? was started by Henry VIII, okay? I'm pretty sure the only 12 steps he ever took was walking Anne Boleyn to the exit, all right? <laughs> the original slogan for All Saints Church was, whoever you are, wherever you are in your journey of faith, you could probably use a cocktail. So, um... <laughs> I know I could. This is all vodka, by the way. This is just a... Uh... The very first time I went to All Saints Church with my husband, I could just feel the room vibrate with the energy. And I was like, oh my God, the room is shaking. Are we having an earthquake? And my husband said, no, you're just in a room full of Epis Episcopalians who haven't had a drink yet. So, uh... okay, what do we got? Okay, so do you know how... Um... Do you know how every Sunday uh, Mike says, uh, turn to a person next to you and introduce yourself and, 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 and create fellowship and, and make a new friend? I would rather die. Uh, <laughs> I'm a really introverted, shy, socially awkward person. So this is the only intro you're gonna get all year long. Um, I'm an actor, I've been an actor for 30 years. I'm, I'm classically trained. Uh, don't try this at home, you're just gonna hurt yourself. Uh, I studied the, the classics at NYU, uh, Shakespeare, Moliere, Jackie Collins, and uh, <laughs> My very first uh, job was a Broadway play uh, uh, 30 years ago called M. Butterfly. I was in the original cast of M. Butterfly. Some of you are nodding. Again, thank you for the smattering of applause. 30 years ago, he's still throwing that credit around. So um, M. Butterfly, for those of you who don't know it, was a, a Broadway play based on the factual account of a French diplomat who has a 20-year love affair with a Chinese opera star. And after 20 years, he discovers that no, not only was his lover a, a spy, but a man. Ooh. <laughs> I just remember reading that script for the first time and thinking, what's the big deal? <laughs> I'm from San Francisco. This kind of thing happens on the bus. So I started out as a theater actor. I did three Broadway plays. I played the Lyceum. I played the Belasco. I played the Eugene O'Neill Theater. And each and every one of those places was a historic landmark, an architectural wonder, a beautiful temple of art. <laughs> this place is nice too. I started out on Broadway, and I'm now playing the basement of a church in Pasadena. Next weekend in the forum, Patti LuPone will be calling bingo. 
and selling Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> I now work out here in television. Um, I work mostly in television. I don't want to throw my credits around, but I did spend four seasons on a television show called Ugly Betty. Um, I did 32 episodes. The show was produced by the Disney Company, so I made $32. I was able to buy a sweater at Banana Republic. <laughs> That's what you call living the dream. Uh, it is the third Sunday of Advent, which is Joy Sunday. Let's give another round of applause for Joy. I know about the Advent calendar. I was raised Catholic, okay? So um, this, you know, Episcopalians, it's like Catholic light, right? There, but there are... There are subtle differences in the services, but they make a huge difference. Like, like in the Episcopalian church, they say, God is with you. God is with you. That's a fact. God is with you. God's here right now, present within you. The goodness of the Lord is with you right now. Catholics, not so much. <laughs> Catholics are like, God be with you. Like, good luck with that. Hope it works out. God be with you. Very reassuring, right? Um, I was not just raised Catholic, I was raised Filipino Catholic. Oh, dear God in heaven. Um, all right, let me break it down for you. The Philippines was a Spanish colony for more than 400 years. So uh, the gift that the Spaniards, uh, 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 the people who brought you the Spanish Inquisition, <laughs> Um, their gift to the, the little brown Filipinos was kind of a medieval Catholicism, if you will. So as a result, Filipinos don't just believe in God. They believe in everything. Vampires, <laughs> leprechauns, Bigfoot. The only thing they don't believe in is paying retail. To Filipinos, The Exorcist was a documentary. <laughs> I saw that movie as a child and it freaked me out. I was terrified, I was up for nights, I couldn't sleep, I clutched a rosary in my hands. Now any sensible parent, like all of you here, would have said, it's only a movie with special effects. Nobody gets possessed by the devil. My parents were like, that happened to your Aunt Gloria. She used to levitate and speak in tongues. <laughs> we knew it was the devil because the room would get so cold. They would tell me things like that and say, all right now, go to sleep. Just... Oh my God. So the first candle in the four candles of Advent, I had it written down here, is... <laughs> The first candle is for hope. Hope. Does anybody remember hope? <laughs> remember our lives a year ago before the election? Remember when a, a presidential tweet didn't want to make you lose the will to live? <laughs> I mean, sure, there must have been arguments on your Facebook page with your Aunt Helen from Indiana as she posted conspiracy, conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton and her child prostitution ring pizza parlor and salad bar. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't like it is now, right? It's not, you, we didn't wake up every morning going, oh my God, we're gonna die! What's happening? We had, we had Michelle Obama planting vegetables in the White House front lawn. Now we have Melania Trump and her terrifying Christmas decorations. <laughs> have you seen them? Online? Look at YouTube. I think the theme this year was nuclear winter. <laughs> it was... Um... I, I think the decorator was Ingmar Bergman. I'm pretty sure they went kind of a seventh seal route this year. Ivanka's playing, you know, chess with death in the corner. Um, 
Look at the Christmas decorations online. Google it. It's all dead white branches. It's all cold and foreboding. It's like, Melania, enough with the symbolism, all right? <laughs> we know your sex life is a nightmare. We get it. <laughs> you guys are a great audience. I was terrified. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. Oh, my God. I still haven't given up hope, that first candle of hope. I'll Alabama elected a Democratic senator. What about that? What about that? Joy, hope. Alabama <laughs> elected a Democratic senator on the first night of Hanukkah. Okay, God must be gay because only an evil queen could come up with that scenario. Oh, Doug Jones won over a pedophile who longed for the days of slavery and thinks gay people should be in jail. Now, the funniest part of that to me is that for Alabama, that was a tough decision. <laughs> like, it was Sophie's choice. Like, it was like, oh my God, how do I choose? The prosecuting attorney who convicted the people who bombed the Birmingham church, or Uncle Creepy McBad Touch, um, <laughs> a champion of justice, or, or Stranger Danger McGillicuddy. I mean, it's just. <laughs> but thankfully, there's a thing in Alabama that saved us all this year, that saved the entire country, in fact. It's called Black. Black people, oh yes. Yes, limousine liberals. Applaud for the black people of Alabama. Black people built this country, black people are gonna save us. Trust and believe. Especially black women, am I right Liz Tatum? Yes ma'am. Black women are gonna save this country, they're gonna vote for the right politicians. Black women are gonna save this country. I'm thinking of specifically one black woman in particular. I'm thinking about Congressman, um, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters, anti-Maxine. She's gonna save, I love Ed Maxine Waters. She's like the black woman at the DMV who's had enough of your nonsense. She's not putting up with it. Do you have an appointment? Next. Oh, did you cut in line? Next. Did you collude with Russia <laughs> to upend our de democratic system? Next. I love Maxine Waters. She is gonna save us, absolutely. All right, okay, you're not gonna believe this, but as a gay man, I am filled with hope. I am filled with hope, because here's the thing. The LGBT community has fought for and won almost every civil rights fight for the past 50 years. And it's, well, yeah, sure. You guys helped. All saints helped. Applaud for yourselves. You had a hand in that. And it's because gay people are good at a lot of things. Letting go isn't one of them. <laughs> All right? Now, and the things that we've been fighting for in this community and in the LGBT community, sexual orientation, gender, a woman's right to choose what she wants to do with her own body, those are all forces of nature. And you cannot fight nature. You can bulldoze it, you can try to put ant over it, right, pave right over it, but that one blade of grass is always gonna break up right through the sidewalk. And right now that blade of grass is us. And we are gonna thrive. Hope, keep hope alive. The second advent candle is for peace. <laughs> and peace comes from within. Peace comes from within. That's a lesson you have to learn for yourself, Dorothy. Peace comes from within. You gotta pray, you gotta meditate, you gotta uh, light some ylang ylang candles. You gotta do whatever you can to find peace. Now, if 
if you, um, if you can't find peace that way through prayer, meditation, or lighting candles, or taking a hot bath, um, I suggest you do what I do, which is watch The Great British Baking Show on Netflix. <laughs> oh, thank you, sweet baby Jesus. It's British people baking dessert. <laughs> Cakes and cookies under a tent in the middle of a field with sheep, little baby goats grazing. <laughs> it's better than Valium, I swear to God. Just watch The Great British Baking Show. Applaud if you watch The Great British Baking Show. Oh, all right. It's like, it's like Xanax, it just evens you out. Um, I took a Xanax this morning. I'm on so much Xanax right now, I think I'm home watching this on Bravo. Um, <laughs> the third Advent candle is for joy. That's today. And there's still joy to be had. There is still joy to be had. Um, the president's going to be impeached, all right? He's just, he's going to, let's have some faith. Let's have some faith in the process. He's going to be impeached. And this is how I know. He's pissed off the FBI, okay? <laughs> you don't piss off the people investigating you, all right? Genius. He called the FBI a disgrace. That means it is going down. <sighs> Trump is gonna be impeached and we're gonna have our first gay president, uh, Mike Pence. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just offended the one Mike Pence voter. She's leaving. Uh, <laughs> expect a very strongly worded letter from that one. She's furious. Look at her go. Uh, Mike Pence is gay. Okay, let's just face it. If he were any deeper in the closet, he would be in Narnia. Okay? Uh, <laughs> Let's check the evidence. His very first public appearance was at a Broadway musical. <laughs> he only has dinner with men. He refers to his wife as mother. Oh. His wife. I haven't seen a beard that unconvincing since Michelle Bachman. <laughs> I had to reach back for that reference, I'm sorry. Does anybody remember Michelle Bachman and her gay husband? Every time they were on television together, I was like, oh my God, it's Waylon Flowers and Madam. <laughs> All right, there is still joy to be had. There is still joy to be had. Joy to be experienced. But you know what? Joy is a part of the greater whole. You can't experience great joy without experiencing great pain. So just for fun today, All Saints, I thought each and every one of us should get up here and share our most painful childhood memory. <laughs> just a... No? Okay. All right, let's scratch that one off the list. All right, let's talk about the holidays. We just got through Thanksgiving. Did everybody have a nice Thanksgiving? Yay, joyful Thanksgiving. Uh, this was uh, my son's eighth Thanksgiving in a row. With We go to my husband's family up to this uh, dairy town uh, three hours north of here called Tulare. Um, I don't know if you've, nobody's heard of Tulare. Okay. Oh, there's some people nodding who've heard of Tulare. Um, it's in this uh, uh, region of California called 1952. And... Uh, <laughs> So, uh, our very first Thanksgiving together as a family when my son was five years old, we adopted him out of uh, foster care. I originally wanted a baby, right? Everybody wants a baby. But my, this is, but my husband said, let's go with a five-year-old. And this is how he pitched it to me. Five years old. He walks, he talks, he goes to school, no diapers. How hard can it be? <laughs> All right, my husband and I are dumb, because here's what we didn't realize. Uh, no diapers. Pooping their pants is what five-year-old boys do best. It is their wheelhouse. It is the specialité de la maison, which I believe is French for, hey, I just pooped my pants. <laughs> Apparently, in all of his foster care placements, nobody had taught him how to wipe his booty, pee in the potty, flush the toilet, and wash his 
hands. I had to teach him those things over and over again. I was like a scatological parrot. Pee in the potty, wipe your booty, flush the potty, wash your hands. Ah! <laughs> Not flushing the toilet was the absolute worst. Every morning walking into the bathroom was like taking a Rorschach test. I was like, oh, that one looks like a snake. Oh, that one looks like a snake buying a bottle of wine from Trader Joe's. Oh, that one looks like a snake eating another snake. Flush the toilet! So after six months, he learned how to do all of those things, and I thought, great, that is over and done with. And then Thanksgiving came. And right before Thanksgiving came, and right before Thanksgiving, my husband and I got into an, a huge fight a big fight. He was like, you know what? Okay, here's the thing. When we adopted him out of foster care, my son had pneumonia. He had walking pneumonia. So we had to feed him very nutritious foods, very organic foods. He rallied. Now he's, he's a giant. We adopt, I adopted the Incredible Hulk. And, um, and so we fed him really, really, really healthy foods. Um, and so right before Thanksgiving, we got into this fight. My husband goes, listen, I don't want my parents to give him too many treats. Mm, and I was like, stop right there. I don't want to be that gay, hippie, crunchy couple that ruins every single holiday with their food restrictions, right? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, we only feed our kid vegan treats made out of spelt flour and hemp milk. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to be that couple. Let him eat whatever he wants. It is our first Thanksgiving together. So we arrive at Grandma and Grandpa's. My son starts eating like he's going to the electric chair. <laughs> he eats an entire gingerbread house, an entire green bean casserole, an entire non-vegan ham. And after Thanksgiving, he's sitting with Grandma and Grandpa by the fireplace making s'mores because I think he still had room in his esophagus. <laughs> That's when he turns to my husband and says, Papa, I don't feel so good. So my husband scoops him up. They run to the bathroom. They don't make it. He barfs all over the kitchen floor. Ah! So I'm in the parent zone, right? I'm like, I got this. So I'm on all fours cleaning up the mess in Dior. <laughs> I see my husband through the open door of the bathroom. My son is barfing into the toilet. And just when it couldn't get any worse, he's having explosive diarrhea at the same time. <laughs> Double dragon. <laughs> I'd heard of the phenomenon, but I'd never seen it before. <laughs> and my husband's looking at me, and he's just covered in poop and barf, and he's got murder in his eyes. You know, he's like. <laughs> and all I could say was, Aren't you glad we didn't adopt a baby? <laughs> Hanukkah's coming up. We are, we're not, what are we like? Hanukkah was the first night of Hanukkah was nearly a week ago. So what day is it, Jamie? Do you remember what night of Hanukkah is? No, don't ask the Church of Christ person what day of Hanukkah this is. <laughs> uh, we usually have a Hanukkah party at our house because all of our closest friends are in show business. And uh, <laughs> the non-religious Jews have a big Hanukkah party at our house every year, and they bring all of their children. And my husband's best friend, Aaron, who was raised conservative Jew, gets up and tells the story of Hanukkah and lights the candles. We have a big brine chicken and latkes. It's fabulous. All the kids get chocolate. And one year, uh, my, my husband's best friend, Aaron, gets up in front of all the children and says, does anybody know the story of Hanukkah? And all the Jewish kids are like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I got nothing. It's, uh, is it an app? Uh, 
my black son raises his hand and says, I know the story. And we're like, he, everybody's like, oh, okay. Hanukkah is when the Jews uh, fought the Maccabees for the control of the temple in Jerusalem. And when they purified the temple, they lit the menorah with oil. It was only supposed to last one night, but it lasted for eight. And that is the miracle of Hanukkah. <laughs> and everybody's looking at him like, what? What is, what is that? He's like, uh, we have this Hanukkah party every year. Um, I have two gay dads. I've seen Yentl 17 times. It's not over yet. So I was uh, picking him up from school the day after our Hanukkah party one year, and he was being walked back to the car by an aide at the school, which is never good news, right? And... Uh, for those of you who've had kids, uh, <laughs> been there, right? When that aide is walking the child back to school, it's, you're praying for death, basically. You're like, so she, she already has that apologetic expression on her face, like, oh, I got some bad news for you. And so we roll down the window, we're like, what did he do? And he goes, oh, he didn't do anything. Um, I just came to apologize. And we were like, what, why? He goes, we didn't know you guys were Jewish. <laughs> And I was like, gay guys with a black kid, we're not Jewish. And she said, oh, because the craft today was to make a holiday ornament. And your son stood up at the beginning of the class and said, I am offended that I am being made to participate in this activity because I am a Jew. So I had to explain to my son, just because we have a Hanukkah party, it doesn't make we're Jewish. <laughs> Calm down, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> you are not a Jew. All right, I gotta wrap things up. You guys have been an amazing audience. I just have to tell you, I, I'm so anxious about doing this today, but you've done nothing but make my family happy and welcome at this church. So give yourselves a huge round of applause. I mean that sincerely. Um, Last, uh, oh, oh, a standing ovation already. Wow, <sighs> she's jumping the gun. Listen, you'll get to the Bloody Mary in due time. <laughs> just, let's just pump the brakes, lady. I'm right there with you. Jeez. Wow. She wasn't kidding. Oh, we're done! <laughs> a madman has the nuclear codes. <laughs> um... Uh, so uh, the last time I was here at All Saints, usually this time of year, I give uh, 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 lessons on foster adoption. And because uh, that's what we did. We, we, we went through the foster adoption of, of California. And, um, you know, we, <laughs> we were brainwashed by lesbians, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> we went on our family cruise. Um, uh, that's the cruise for all the gays and lesbians and the children that they purchased in Beijing. And... Um, <laughs> And all of my gay friends were like, girl, don't you go on that cruise. You go on that cruise, you're going to come back with a baby. And I was like, no, what, what do they do, hand them out of the gift shop? No. What's this? <laughs> but we went on that cruise, and that's exactly what happened. We went to a foster adopt seminar on a gay family cruise. They said there are 400,000 children in the foster care system. 100,000 of them will not be reunited with their children, with their parents, and they are up for adoption. The most desirable placement is a Caucasian baby girl. Nobody wants them over the age of three. Nobody wants a boy. And if they're African American, yikes. A Caucasian baby girl is seven times more likely to be placed than an African American boy over the age of three. Now listen to me. I love little white girls. I got nothing against them. I've been one my entire life. <laughs> But if my family and I, my husband and I are gonna start a family, there can only be one lady in the house, and you're looking at her. <laughs> so we were certified foster adopt parents in California. In 2009, we got a call from Child Protection Services, saying we have a little boy near named Zion. He's been in the foster care system since he was three years old because of neglect. 
And we were like, oh, neglect. That was our reaction completely. Oh, no, neglect. Neglect is one of the worst things you could subject a child to because it really traumatizes them. They could lose the ability to attach. You can adopt them. They can adopt you. And she must have seen that expression on our faces because she said, no, this child is different. This child is expressive and affectionate and funny. And as far as expressing himself, he has no problem whatsoever. We always know when he's in the office. So we asked her, when can we see a picture? She said, when you stop asking questions. So she showed us the picture and we said, that's our kid. That is our kid. I don't know how we knew it was our kid. We could feel it in our bones. So we said, OK, when can we meet him? She said, this week. We said, oh my god, it is Thanksgiving. We have to go home, we have to buy a bed, and we have to tell your parents that we're taking their black grandson home for, give, for Thanksgiving for the first time. We got a call the next day saying that we were out of the picture. Another family had come forward, uh, a blood relative, and said that they would be Zion's permanent placement, and we were out of the picture. So Thanksgiving was terrible. Christmas was even worse. We, are, we were devastated. We felt a, a, a huge loss. We were like grieving, and we had no idea why. We'd never met this kid. We were, got a call from a social worker talking about another placement in January, and we said, you know what? We don't feel the same way about this kid that we feel about Zion. And she goes, you know what? Let me call you back in 10 minutes. Let me check out on Zion's situation and tell you what's going on. They called us back in 10 minutes and said, the placement with Zion's blood relative has been a complete disaster. You have to come get him tonight at 6. <laughs> so we were like, oh my god, did we really mean all those things that we said? So we arrived at the Child Protection Services offices in Long Beach, and he was already waiting for us, this tiny little boy, five years old. He was sitting between two bags. One had all of his toys, these are garbage bags. One had all of his toys, and one had all of his clothes. And he was sitting in the middle of them like he was just another pile of junk somebody had dropped off and forgotten about. And I thought, this isn't fair. No child should ever be made to feel this way. And then I got for the very first time that this wasn't a five-year-old. This was a baby. Right? This was a baby. Because when you're five years old, you still need your mommy. You still need your daddy or two gay guys with a really cute house. So I said, hi, I'm Alec, this is Jamie. And he said, do you guys want to play Don't Break the Ice? Do you remember Don't Break the Ice? That game where you tap on the ice cubes and you send the little polar bear plunging to its death. A little lesson in global warming. We broke the ice by playing Don't Break the Ice for 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes, I said, do you want to get out of here? He said, yes. So he took his bags, we went to the station wagon. I turned around, I said, are you hungry? He said, yes. And I said, where do you want to eat? And he said, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and in that moment, I became a parent! <laughs> we are not spending our first night together as a family at Chuck E. Cheese! And the last candle on the Advent wreath is for love. And that's what I wish for each and every one of you this holiday season. I love you all. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good day.